I will tell you that when I found out, I didn't know how to react about being a dad, but I will tell you this, that the stress was, my wife telling me the minute I'm pregnant, we need a house, it gotta be somewhere else. We were trying to keep the finances in order. I was 16 years old in high school, and my first love uh, ended up pregnant. And I found out through her mom, who came by my house to tell my mom and dad that her daughter was pregnant. My son was born when I was a senior in high school. Yeah, I like my story better. But <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was a little older. I was over 21, I'm 23. And at the time, my wife had paged me when the pagers had voicemails. She says uh, at the time, hello, daddy, congratulations. And then, uh, you know, I, I smile from cheek to cheek at the moment, but then some things started setting in. Your days are, some days are over. It's their time now. <laughs> yeah. Mm. For me, I was young, and I was just hoping, I was excited. Um, I, I don't know, I just wanted to be like my dad. I was just hoping I, I was gonna be as good of a dad as my stepdad was. And I think that was kind of stressful. For me, I was relieved because I had like, I guess what would be rare, a planned pregnancy, and I was overworked. I was pretty happy. Um, but at the same time, I didn't even know what I was really happy about. Mm -hmm. The fact that I was gonna be a father or, you know, that I had somebody's life that I had that, that uh, I had to make sure I take care of and they depended on. Me. Yeah, I just graduated from college, from undergrad, so I had uh, all these uh, aspirations and everything. And uh, my wife was my girlfriend at the time. She was still in undergrad, so for me it was just uh, the sudden change and kind of dealing with uh, you know the anxieties. I guess some some degree of trepidation that comes with that, and just figuring out how do we uh, manage uh, this situation. And you know. I'm, Worked out well, so you know, uh, wife, you know, it's a great woman, and things turned out well. So sure. can't complain about sure. it. I, I think the the challenge is, is you never want your kids to make the same mistakes that you made. Mm -hmm. right. And there's times where you have to hide a certain level of pain, even when they do make these mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure out how do you convey that message to the kids that listen, you messed up, you messed up. And, and how do you convey it without ripping them down, tearing them down, and, and, and tearing down a, their self uh, confidence and their self esteem? My son was raised with his mom, so I wasn't there in the house when he was raised, but we spent a lot of time together, coached him in baseball. So I made sure that I kind of made up that time. But as he became a teenager, and was more into his independence. It was hard for me to connect with him because he had his own friends and because I wasn't living in the household, uh, it was hard. Being a barber, I have parents that bring their child here mm -hmm. so that we could talk to them. So you almost feel like mm -hmm. an um, extended father mm -hmm. to talk to these kids and you get them from three to 19. And you know, they want, you know, you. You constantly got to tell them about our past, our struggles, what's real, what's not real. Yeah. You just have so many competing factors. You got the street life, you got all this stuff that they think comes easy. My life is easy mm -hmm. because it's not like, listen, I grew up in an era where you went to your house and if I did something, your parents knocked me around because mm -hmm. that's what happened. You know, they didn't respect everybody in the neighborhood because they all had the right to grab everybody's ear, pull you down and say, listen, we're going to call your dad, sit down somewhere. Yeah. But very different now. Very you don't really different. have neighborhoods, you got hoods. Yeah, that's a If there's a playbook, it changes by the year because the environment changes. Uh, I just take a pic I try to take a page out of you know, coach said it this way, mm -hmm. Lance said it this way, Barbara said this. I'm gonna take a little piece, exactly. bits and pieces, and then I think adapt it to our situation, mm -hmm. each one of our kids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I tell my <laughs> And that is, what is the agenda? Just live by the agenda. So whatever advice that I give you, figure out what's my agenda. Whatever somebody else wants you to do, figure out what's their agenda. Mm -hmm. There's an agenda in most people when they're asking somebody to do something. And if you figure out and you can decipher what their specific agenda is, 
then that should influence you one way or the other to either go according to what they want or go in the opposite direction. I don't think it's a direct formula, but I think it starts with time. Um, I was around my children a lot. You know, I, I insulated their world almost to the point of nausea sometimes, different cartoons and all that stuff. But I wanted to know what they was being fed mentally. So I, you know, I insulated their world. I found out what they were doing. And also the time that we spent together, it built up trust. And I feel like they trust me to the point where they can always talk to me about anything. Part of what Lance said about having an agenda uh, or seeing what people's agendas are, um, mm -hmm. Um, another way I look at that too is, uh, you know, what are the goals with this right here? You know, what are other people's goals? What are your goals? Is what is what is that decision you're making helping you achieve this goal? Mm -hmm. Because you know, there's going to be a consequence, and I think Lance mentioned that too. There's going to be a consequence of whatever you do. Absolutely. You know, uh, you know, whether you choose to do A or choose not to do A, either one's going to have a consequence. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, you know, what's what's the better choice? Mm -hmm. You know, kids are the, the kids as far as behavior hasn't changed. It's, you know, you go through. You know, through the beginning of time, and all kids act the same way. Um, all kids learn the same way. It's basically the attention that they get. And I don't think that today's generation, um, the younger generation today, are giving the kids the kind of attention that they need to be healthy as far as their development as we got. And I think that's the big difference. They come through the door. Don't tell Jeff. <laughs> What you mean? They tell on themselves. Exactly. Yeah. By saying that. They tell because you know, mm -hmm. you know why? Because kids, mm -hmm. you know, whether they're yours or somebody else's, they want guidance. Yeah, they, they need Absolutely. guidance. Yeah. They, they yep. are looking for guidance. And you know, it's up to us to guide them. Mm -hmm. However, we got to guide them. Yeah. You got to get your friend to relay the message to guide them, just so, so be it. And also, what you were saying is the I generation iPhone, iPad. Things are about self first. You know, it's all like a psychological ploy, I feel anyway, mm -hmm. that they putting in the atmosphere. So everything is about you first. Mm -hmm. And it's not even about the child. You know, sometimes my son be like, you know, why you why you don't get that and this and that? And I say, son, if I start getting all the things I want, what do you think is gonna happen to the things that you want? Mm -hmm. Understand that. Like I make the sacrifice willingly. And I don't think it's a lot of people who truly have embraced that in our community. You know what I mean? And it's not the fact that they don't want to, but they haven't matured to that degree yet. You know, it's just how we all do it. We all do it differently, but the outcome is we want responsible, mature kids who, who grow up and be productive and, and know what life is about. Right. And don't forget where they come from mm -hmm. and just right. move forward and use that strength from the past to, to keep them going. So that, that's my saying, you know, that's my saying. So. I mean, I think barbershops are the last frontier of the community. I mean, you know, you guys are the glue that, that you know, like holds the community together. Like you said, there's no neighbor in the hood, mm -hmm. and the barbershop is the only neighborhood in the hood. We need more communication in general. You know, just if I see you and, and we need more warm currents between men, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, instead of, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, how you doing, brother? You know what I mean? I, I learned that from being a coach. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I like talking to real men. You know, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of that to me on a, on a high scale of just communication like that. Again, we all have a pilot, we all have a responsibility. Uh, and I accept that responsibility to be a positive force in our community.